Welcome to the Now, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Mika Burton. Merry Switchmas, everyone. Yay! Nintendo has pulled the uh, kimono off their <laughs> portable console. It's time to find out if all those leakers were just full of shit or if they actually knew what they were talking about. We've got some of the system's price, release date, Breath of the Wild at launch, a new Mario game, and loads of other cool new stuff to talk about following Nintendo's live event last night and Treehouse Dream this morning, which as of shooting, is still going on. Yeah. If you want to catch the full reveal stream, we've actually covered there since we streamed it with commentary last night and spent a little bit of time afterwards discussing whether we felt like it was up to snuff. Spoiler, I was a little bit disappointed with the weak launch lineup and the lack of specs talk, but I think that the hardware itself is actually really very impressive for what it wants to do and the sheer amount of engineering that's had to go into it, very impressive. I have to agree with that. I think that the launch lineup is kind of eh, but for me, the fact that you could take a console on the go, I pre-ordered it instantly, and I am so on the hype train. All right, so outside of our personal evaluations, there are some lingering concerns just in general over the total price of the system once you start adding on peripherals, mm. questions about whether or not Nintendo's supporting the system properly as well. But before we get all boo-hooey, let's look at the good stuff. The Switch will hit stores on March 3rd in the US, Japan, and Canada, as well as major European countries, so fuck you Luxembourg, I guess, uh, and Hong Kong, which is honestly, that is earlier than most people expected. Oh yeah. Uh, it'll retail for $300, at least in the US. It'll be region free, which means that you can play games from anywhere in the world. So those games they announced for Japan that they haven't said in about anything about coming over here yet, ah, uh, just import them and yeah, learn Japanese. So in Japan, the console will run you 29,980 yen, $399 in Canada, $469 in Australia, 279 pounds in the UK, and for the rest of Europe, Check your retailers because there are a lot of you and it's all different prices. <laughs> so here's what you get for $300. You get the Switch system, which is also the screen portion of the console, two Joy-Cons, those tiny little thingies, a dock, a grip for the Joy-Cons, two wrist straps that attach to the Joy-Cons, a power cord, and an HDMI cable. Nintendo officials spent an awful lot of time discussing the Joy-Cons in particular, which actually makes sense because they're the connective tissue that enables the Switch to Switch its formats. <laughs> As was shown in the Switch trailer, the Joy-Cons lock on the sides of the system itself, allowing you to play in portable mode, but when you remove the Joy-Cons from the system, you can insert them into the Switch's grip instead, forming a standard controller, or use them separately as individual teeny tiny tiny controllers. It's clear that the Nintendo wants to make the Switch as hybrid as possible, acting like a traditional system, but also as a portable device that can be played by multiple people at once. The system obviously has Wi-Fi capabilities for online play, but up to eight systems can also connect over a local wireless connection, which means that you can have eight player local co-op. Or 16, because you can have eight of the Switches and you have two people playing per Switch. So if, so, if anyone remembers the amazing uh, daisy chains of four GameCubes playing Mario Kart <laughs> Double Dash with 16 16 people, think about that. You can get that kind of thing going. You can also get 16 player local Super Smash, which we all know is tons of fun. <laughs> it's gonna be expensive, because it's gonna take eight switches uh, and all that, but yeah. 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 Uh, so the Joy-Cons themselves have analog sticks plus A, B, X, Y buttons and two shoulder buttons. Each also has a capture button to take screenshots and according to Nintendo, those will support video capture in the future as well. The Joy-Cons are also equipped with a gyroscope and accelerometer, both of which have already been utilized in some launch games, but we'll get to that later. They also have something called HD Rumble, which provide a more subtle and varied levels of vibrations, as well as IR motion cameras that can detect distance, shape, and motions of nearby objects so you can play rock, paper, scissors, or eat a cheeseburger, or feel like there's ice in your hand. Or point it at your dick. That's what everyone is gonna do, come on. So true. The Switch's screen is a 6.2 inch capacitive multi-touch screen that has a resolution of 1280 by 720. Its dock provides power while also charging and outputting video and audio from the system to a TV. Now as for its output video resolution, it's 1080p when docked, 720p when it's in handheld or tabletop mode. It's also worth noting that the screen isn't tied to any specific dock. If you have multiple TVs in the house, you can get a second dock and move the switch between them or switch the switch between no, them. Oh. This is gonna get, we're gonna be done with this so fast. <laughs> <laughs> The battery life of the Switch, which has been a big question since it's meant to be capable of on-the-go play, is anywhere from two and a half to six hours depending on the game and how intensely it uses the system. Nintendo said that Breath of the Wild, for example, can be played for about three hours on a single charge. 
The Switch has 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which obviously is not very much, nope. but can also use micro SD cards to expand that if you're doing a lot with digital media instead of the game cartridges, like people do on their 3DSs. Right. But what about the CPU? So how does the Switch stack up to the PS4 and Xbox One? Uh, the very important questions that Nintendo didn't exactly reveal details on. They didn't say anything specifically about the CPU. They did say it's a custom Tegra chip powered by NVIDIA, which we've already known up to this point. So there's been hope that it would end up being a newer Pascal chip rather than the rumored older Maxwell chip, but Nintendo's not saying at the moment, which doesn't seem promising. As for online play, that will be free until the fall, after which Nintendo will charge for the service. There's no word yet on how much the online service will cost, but charging for it would be a first for Nintendo. However, as we all know, Sony and Microsoft both charge for their service, and PSN got way better once Sony started charging and using that revenue to improve their network, so oh. maybe this is a sign that Nintendo is gonna beef up their online functionality, and honestly, they could use it. So true. Okay, so let's get into the games. Obviously, Zelda Breath of the Wild was the biggest and most emotional announcement, especially the reveal at the end that would be a launch title. The game looked amazing. We got to see some more gameplay footage and Nintendo is clearly betting that the franchise's popularity will help sell the Switch. Aside from that though, Nintendo spent only a little bit of time with a handful of other games. Besides Zelda, maybe the biggest reveal was Super Mario Odyssey, which is coming out this holiday season. It's a 3D sandbox style Mario game reminiscent of Mario 64 and mm. Mario Sunshine, featuring the usual platforming goodness as well as a special cap that will help Mario on his quests. The cap is alive? and it's coming out this holiday season. So it's probably the best hat-based platformer you'll play all year. <laughs> uh, Nintendo also announced a sequel to its family-friendly competitive shooter, Splatoon. It's called Splatoon 2 instead of the much more obvious Splatoon. I'm so uh, mad. Uh, and it'll feature teenage squids engaging in team-based paint battles as Splatoon does. Yes. The sequel will feature new weapons and stages and it launches sometime this summer. For RPG fans, Nintendo announced that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will be coming to the Switch. The previous entry, Xenoblade Chronicles, was released on the Wii in 2013. The sequel releases sometime this year. Now, one of the most interesting new IPs that Nintendo announced was ARMS, a motion-controlled fighting game. It looks stupid, but it also looks really cool. But it's called ARMS! <laughs> no, that's very descriptive. It's true. Uh, where you use the Joy-Cons to, and your arms, to punch your opponent into submission, and that one will release later this spring. But maybe the one they glossed over that really deserves more attention is Snipper Clips. That one's coming in March, and it's a cooperative puzzle game that takes place in a notebook. That sounds weird, but the gameplay that's come out looks pretty awesome. Now, the Switch will also get an updated version of Mario Kart 8 called Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on April 28th. That will include all the DLC tracks from the Wii U version of the game, plus new characters, uh, specifically Splatoon characters and a Splatoon track, and revamped battle mode as well. All of that was cool, but there are a few notable concerns following the end of the event, when Nintendo more formally announced more pricing details on their website. Yeah, if you want to buy a separate pair of Joy-Cons, they're $80 for the pair, or $50 for cool. just one. The Pro Controller is $70, and a spare dock is $90. Yeesh. And when you add any of those, really, to the $299 price of the system and the price of a game, you're spending quite a bit of money on what's either a really expensive portable or an underpowered console, depending on your point of view and they didn't really show a lot of launch software to make it a must-have at those kinds of prices. At $299, gamers can also grab an Xbox One S or a PS4, so that might prove to be a challenge for Nintendo in the long run. For a comparison, the Wii U was also launched at $299, while the DS and 3DS launched at $149 and $249, respectively. But of course, the biggest question mark with Nintendo consoles is always going to be if they can support it with enough games to make all that money worth your while. Yes, we got some great titles and trailers, but Nintendo really didn't go into a lot of detail for what we're playing on day one and throughout the launch window. So, so far we've got five major games confirmed for launch day. On to Switch, Breath of the Wild, Skylanders, Imaginators, Super Bomberman R, and Just Dance 2017. The rest of March will offer a few more options like uh, Has Been Heroes, Fast RMX, and Snipper Clips, which we mentioned before. Besides Mario Kart 8 in April, we've got Rhyme, Puyo, Puyo Tetris, Disgaea 5, and ARMS all listed for a uh, kind of vague spring. Just vague spring. Unfortunately, not even Skyrim is coming on launch day. Despite all the rumors, it won't be hitting until the fall. And even when it does, it's not the special edition. It's old Skyrim. It's just Skyrim. I, which I still don't understand. I don't get it. It's gotta have something to do with the hardware limitations, but if they're already limited by the hardware, it's not a great time. I mean, Skyrim on the go. That's what you got. Yeah, it is that. 
Hmm. The first few months of the Switch actually look pretty great if you're someone who skipped the Wii U. You've got Breath of the Wild in March, Mario Kart 8 in April, Splatoon 2 in the summer, which so possibly like May, June time frame. But if you've already got a Wii U, you're just as well served to get Breath of the Wild on your old console, then wait for things like Mario Odyssey in the holiday, or just to see if more support comes with Switch in general. And right now, that's it's looking a little bit iffy. I mean, yes, Nintendo lined up some of their heavy hitters just to show you a little bit of representation from across the industry. EA talked about FIFA, Sega talked about something, and Suda51 <laughs> talked about an unnamed game related to No More Heroes, but there's not a lot of evidence that major third parties are bringing their best best to the system. Side note, it was also kind of weird that we didn't see Ubisoft there, who was supposedly has a quite a few things in development, like Beyond Good and Evil 2 and a Mario RPG crossover with rabbits, so yeah. we just got Just Dance. As for other titles that we do know are in development, thanks to more Nintendo announcements, there are, well, there's quite a few, around 30 according to Nintendo, although they claim there are as many as 80 in development. In addition to some of the notable games we've already mentioned, like Mario, Zelda, Mario Kart, Splatoon, and ARMS, the list of 30 games includes Ultra Street Fighter 2, Disgaea 5 Complete, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, so that's cool. <laughs> They've also confirmed Farming Simulator, Fire what? Emblem Warriors, Minecraft, Minecraft Story Mode, Puyo Puyo Tetris, Rayman Legends, Rhyme, Shin Megami Tensei, Siberia 3, Steep, Project Sonic, and NBA 2K18. Not a terrible list, but definitely not filled with the AAA types of offerings you find on Xbox or PlayStation. Still, Nintendo hasn't been competing with either of them for a while, and they seem comfortable acting as a complement to those systems rather than direct competition. But, okay, so PlayStation, Xbox aside, even if you compare the Switch's launch lineup to the Wii U's, there's really no comparison, and not in a good way. The Wii U launched back in 2012 with something like 31 games, including Black Ops 2, Batman Arkham City, Mass Effect 3, FIFA 13, and Assassin's Creed 2, to go along with their first party stuff like New Super Mario Bros. U and Zombie U. The Switch's lineup for launch day doesn't even come close to matching that, which raises the question is, did Nintendo even learn its lesson from Wii U? The thing that killed that platform, well, one of the many, many things that killed that platform, was the weak lineup. There weren't a lot of system selling games that couldn't be had elsewhere. The other major thing was that they failed to distinguish Wii U from Wii, which caused a lot of confusion with family type consumers. They did, at least, spend a lot of time talking about how the Switch is functionally different from their previous things, so. There you go. That's something. Uh, it was also kind of strange that we didn't see more of Nintendo's franchises on display either. Pokemon Stars was heavily rumored coming into the show, and Game Freak has already said they're working on something, so that was a fairly notable absence, especially if you're trying to impress investors. Also missing, Smash Brothers. And Metroid. Just saying. You like, come on. Gotta bring it back. Okay, so there's definitely a lot to consider if you find yourself in the market for everything the Switch does offer, but probably better consider it quick because pre-orders are selling out everywhere. Oh boy. Yeah, pretty much. And March 3rd isn't very far away. This really, it could make the NES classic shortage look like amateur hour. That said, the first run always sells out. It's after that, if they keep selling, that's the big True. question. But I'm locked in, are you locked in? I'm locked in. So we're good. What do you guys think of everything we learned about the Nintendo Switch? Let us know in the comments. And for future updates on all things Nintendo, like this video and subscribe to The Know. And now we'll switch to this. <laughs> okay. We're all gonna be, we're gonna be switching. We're gonna be, we're gonna be switching at work. <laughs>